Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. I also have a YouTube channel called Power Tools with Thread, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I share a lot of quilting and machine embroidery tutorials, and we have a good time over there. I want to show you the cutest new design from Designs by Juju. This is the Scarecrow Wall Hanging, and what's so cool about the Scarecrow Wall Hanging? Well, he is 3D. So this is an in the hoop project. He is just adorable. Look at his little raffia for his hair, his arms, and he's got raffia on his feet. He is a in the hoop project that you can make where you work with both sides of the hoop. If you're brand new to machine embroidery, the video you're about to watch is beginner friendly. But if you're a seasoned embroiderer, then there are timestamps below the video so that you can jump ahead if you like to. This design comes in 5x7, 6x10, 8x12, and 9.5x14. So even if you have a 5x7 hoop, you can make this adorable wall hang. Let me give you a couple of tips that I wrote down while I was making this video so that it might be able to help you a little bit. Uh, I do not recommend pre-cutting your fabric. You might want to if you've got a cutting machine, but because it is an in the hoop project where you're working on the back of the fabric as well, you want to make sure that that fabric is large enough for the satin stitch to catch everything. So I really recommend not pre-cutting your pieces and doing it the old fashioned way and trimming around the tack down line in the hoop. If your scarecrow is going to be seen from the back, then you may want to use the same color bobbin as what you're using on top. Mine's not going to be seen from the back because it might be hanging on a wall or a door, but if you might have yours maybe on a yard stake or something like that where he can dangle in the breeze, you may want to use a bobbin of the same color. To remove the stabilizer from the outside, the instructions tell you that you can use a Q-tip. I just used a wet microfiber cloth and it worked great. These pieces are large enough that you can just gently rub the fibers of a microfiber cloth around the edges and it will all come right off really simple. I don't recommend dunking the whole thing into a sink because you're going to get rid of the stabilizer inside and it's going to get real uh, gooey and sticky and stiff when it dries. So just use the a microfiber cloth or a Q-tip to go around the outer edges of the project to get rid of the water soluble stabilizer on the outside. Again, this is a beginner friendly project and it's a beginner friendly video. So if you're brand new to embroidery, don't feel like you can't do something this cute and you're just starting out. I'm going to take you baby step by baby step through the entire process to hoop and to stitch and what buttons to push and all of that. I am working on the Brother Luminaire and even though that's a great big machine and you might have a machine that's a 5 by 7 it doesn't matter because basically every home embroidery machine functions pretty much the same way. You just might have to refer to your user manual if I'm touching on a button and you're not sure if your machine has that button or maybe the icon on your machine looks a little bit different. But you should be able to do this no problem if you're a beginner and I encourage you to give it a try. If you want your scarecrow to look just like mine, Two Chicks Quilting in Ganeda, Texas has kitted the fabric for you. So I will link to the fabric kit below the video. It's got all of the pieces marked and there's lots of fabric in there. In case you make a boo-boo, you'll have enough to be able to get by and make yours just as adorable as this one. It even comes with the raffia that you need for the hands and feet and hair. So why bother going around and trying to source all that stuff yourself? Just order the kit from Two Chicks Quilting. There are different options for arms that are bent or not and legs that are bent or not and you can put a flower on him and he's held together 
completely with buttons. It is so cute. So we're even going to make buttonholes. Don't be afraid. I'm going to show you a sure way how to do this so that you don't mess anything up. I think you're really going to enjoy this. This is absolutely precious. So let's get started and I'm going to show you how to make this cute little guy. When you open up the zip file and you get all of the embroidery designs that are included, uh, they might look a little overwhelming because there's so many of them, but that's because there's all different sizes. So I'm going to jump up here in my view menu and I'm going to go to extra large icons so we can take a look at all of these. You have got design files for five by seven hoops and six by 10 hoops. And as we scroll down, we have eight by 12 hoops and all the way down to the nine and a half by 14 hoops. Also, you've got different choices of arms and legs that you can use. So we have arms bent. That means both of them have a bend in the elbows. We have arms mixed. One is straight, one is bent, and then we have arms straight. Then you have the body and the head and the flower. And then you've got three choices of legs, just like the arms. Both of them are bent at the knee, one straight, one bent, and both of them straight. And, and then it jumps into the next size. So it might look like a lot of files, but they're all just different sizes to give you different choices. Now I can see these images on my computer screen like pictures in my picture folder because I have a utility on my computer called Imbrilliance Thumbnailer. And I really like that so that I can see everything that I'm doing. What I recommend so that you don't get things mixed up, I'm going to come up to new and folder and I'm gonna call it Scarecrow Not Used. I want to make the 8 by 12. So I'm going to click on the first one for the 9.5 by 14, hold down my shift key, click on the last one for the 9.5 by 14, and drag these into the Scarecrow Not Used folder. Now I'm going to click the first 5 by 7, and I'm going to go all the way over to the last 6 by 10, hold down my shift key and click it. That will highlight the first one, the last one, and everything in between when you hold down the shift key. And I'm just going to click one time on here and drag these 18 files into not used. There we go. Now I know that all of the files that I have here are going to be the ones that I need for my 8x12 scarecrow. That just kind of keeps things simple. I'm going to open them up in Imbrilliance. In Imbrilliance, I'm going to change my hoop to the uh, nine by or the eight by twelve, and I want to pull in the scarecrow. I'm going to come up here on my little boxes and uh, minimize this just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is send all of these designs that I want over to the Luminaire. So for the arms, I think I want both of the arms bent. So I'm going to drag my arms in. And we can see they're both going to stitch at the same time. And I'm going to come up here to Utility and Senta Solaris XP1. You have to have your machine on. You have to have had it go through its first sequence where it moves the arm around and whatnot. This works for any brother or baby lock machine that can take designs wirelessly. I'm gonna tell it okay, so that one's done. And I'm going to click on it now and highlight it and hit delete. And go back down to my, uh, my folder. Let's do the body, bring it over, and utility. So this is all I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna send all of these over to the embroidery machine. If you don't have a machine that accepts designs wirelessly, you can come up here to File, Save Stitch File As, and you can put it on a USB drive that you might have. If you don't have embroidery software 
to send designs over to your machine or you just don't want to use it, all you need to do is in your yellow folder at the bottom of your screen, open that up and click the designs that you want, hold down the control key and select each one that you want. So the arms, the body, the head, the flower, and the legs. And then you can just take them and drag them onto your USB drive and they should be there and you can take the USB over to the machine now. Your kit will come with everything you need to make the scarecrow. You're going to get the raffia that you need for his little fringe and your fabric kit will come labeled so that you know exactly what fabric is what. We have flower leaves, flower center, and you've got a group of fabric for your patches, the hat band, and the flower, the hat, his legs, the face, and the body and arms. So everything is labeled and very simple for you. All you need to do is get some buttons of your choosing to finish out and put everything together. I love what Two Chicks Quilting did to create these kits. I'm gonna show how to hoop using a magnetic hoop and a standard traditional hoop. This is two layers of Pellon's 541 Wash and Gone. So this is a fibrous water soluble stabilizer. You wanna make sure to use that kind of stabilizer. They make a lot of different kinds of water solubles. And if you're using one that looks like cellophane or maybe Glad press and seal or something like that, that's not the right kind. You need to get this. This is hanging on the stabilizer wall in Walmart in a little blue package. And the easiest way to measure stabilizer is I take the largest hoop and I will lay it on the stabilizer and I want to make sure I have about at least an inch and a half to two inches all the way around. Let me put the little screw over here at this end. And then I will just run a rotary cutter on the outside of it. And that's how you make sure that it is the right size. Don't worry if it's all wrinkled, okay? That is not going to matter. Then you can take the stabilizer and lay it right on top of the hoop. Your hoop may have, this one's got a little Audi belly button right there, or it may have some arrows and you wanna put that end in first. Make sure that the end is nice and loose and pop that in and pull out any kind of puckers and just recess that into the hoop and then I am going to tighten it with the thumb screw. Normally on these kinds of hoops, I will use a screwdriver to go ahead and tighten that up pretty good. And you want to recess that inner hoop just a tiny, tiny bit if you can, okay? And we're going to um, just pull out. So you can still see some wrinkles in here. That's perfectly fine. You won't even notice it when the design is done. That will all be smoothed out with the stitching. Okay, so that's how you hoop stabilizer in a traditional hoop. I'm gonna use a magnetic hoop. This is from uh, Designs and Machine Embroidery. And I, don't have an 8 by 12 hoop. I have the 9.5 by 14. So even though I'm not making the 9.5 by 14 scarecrow, this is the hoop I'm going to use. If you are ever considering buying one of these, I highly recommend that you buy the most hoop that you can afford that will work with your machine because you can always make smaller things in a larger hoop, but you cannot make bigger things in a small hoop. So these are a bit of an investment and I've got links below to them if you are interested. So you need a fibrous water soluble stabilizer and I just opened this package. This is Pellon's 541 Wash and Gone. You can get this at Walmart. So this works really well and I am just going to open up this 
uh, like this. Now on those smaller pieces, such as the flower, could use a smaller hoop. I've got a five by seven hoop that might work for that. So we'll see how it all works out and fits, but you might waste a little bit of stabilizer by using a larger hoop, but you'll definitely be grateful that you bought the larger hoop. This is how I measure out my stabilizer. I just lay it across and make sure there's about an inch over the top and all the sides and then just cut. That works. The instructions recommend two layers. So once you've got the first one, do the second. I would get two packages of this at Walmart uh, just to make sure you have enough for all the hoopings. And then to get it hooped, get the corrugated plastic that came with the hoop and I'm gonna kind of lay the corrugated plastic halfway in the middle of the hoop like this and then I'm going to put the stand up the edge of it here and I can line up the top and bottom edges and lay this down and then I can just pull the corrugated plastic out of the hoop and you get a nice hooping and then you can kind of straighten that out like that. All right, that looks pretty good. So we've got everything hooped. Doing these projects is a great use of scraps. And I've got a project board here. Uh, you can get these at various quilt shops. I will link to them below. I just like to use these because they're easy to move all of your pieces around and keep everything straight. And uh, you can even make them yourself. This is just foam board that you could get at Walmart and then you use some adhesive spray on the back. This is batting so it will hold all of your pieces, you know, keep them from sliding around. And then a two and a half inch strip of binding and you can hot glue it around the edges. These are very handy. That's a nice project for a day is to make that work, you know, make those up. I, I've got all different sizes of them here. I'm going to cut my fabric for the arms and I'm uh, using the eight by 12. So I need an eight by 12 and a quarter piece of batting. This is 100% cotton batting that I buy by the roll from Loft Supply. That is a husband and wife team out of the Woodlands in Texas over by Houston. And they buy all of their batting from a manufacturer in Fort Worth. So they have uh, USA made products using US cotton, which I love. So this is an eight and a half inch ruler. I know that no matter where I place it on here, I've got the right width. So I just need to go to the 12 and a quarter inch mark. And if your batting's a little bit larger than the then what's called for, that's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna smooth it out here. Don't have to do that, and it's even about half an inch too big. So I'm gonna take my batting and put it on my project board right here. Now for my other pieces, the arms front fabric is eight by 12 and a quarter. So arms, body and arms, here we go. I'm going to cut these and then iron them because when you're doing applique like this, it doesn't have to be super exact. You're going to cut away a lot of it. So if you've got wrinkles under your ruler, it's not that big of a deal. So eight by 12 and a quarter for the arms. And I'm gonna put them in the order on the project board that they are called for in the pattern. Patch fabric one is one and three quarter square. So let me get out my patch fabrics. Here we go. We need four patch fabrics. So we have one, two, three, four, all four of them. Which one is which? They are all the same size. So we're gonna make this really easy. I'm just going to cut two and a half inch strip off of my uh, patch fabrics and I've got those ready to go. Okay. See, you don't have to get all crazy picky. They've given you plenty of fabric for you to use them as, uh, as needed. And then I need 
arms back fabric and that's also eight by 12 and a quarter. Cut this right where I did the last one. Okay, so there's my arms back fabric. All good. You've got plenty, you guys. I have everything left here and this would be for the body. All right, so I've got everything cut now that I need for the arms. Okay, we're all ready to get started. I am using Dimes Designs and Machine Embroidery's Exquisite Thread in my machine. And I'm using the orange that I want. The orange, for me, you can use whatever color you want to use with your fabric. So I'm gonna use orange that will go around the outside of the arms, and then I'm gonna use black for the stitching that will go around all of the patches. So it doesn't matter what color fabric I'm using. If you want to change your thread colors for your patches, you certainly can. It's completely up to you. I have got Dimes pre-wound bobbins. You guys, I have had this tube of bobbins forever, and they last a very long time. This is the Style A Class 15, and it is a 70 weight bobbin thread. My thread is a 40 weight. My top thread is a 40 weight thread. I have a Organ 7511 needle in the machine. This is the Brother Luminaire. It has been upgraded to the XP3. And as I said earlier, I'm using the Designs of Machine Embroidery. This is the nine and a half by 14 hoop even though I'm making the eight by 12, that's fine. And I did not pre-cut my pieces this time. I'm just gonna trim them in the hoop as the instructions show how to do. I have already ironed my pieces of fabric for the top and the bottom. And we're gonna do what is called lap work. That's what I call it, lap work. And when you do lap work, you're gonna want a firm surface. I like to use a quilter's cut and press. I've got links to everything below the video of all the things that I'm using here. And when you remove the hoop from the machine, you're gonna wanna put the hoop on a firm, flat surface. So whether you use a desk, your sewing table, your cutting table, whatever it is, you always want to make sure that you, when you remove the hoop and you're doing any kind of work on it, whether you're trimming or maybe you're putting things on the back of the hoop for these in the hoop projects, you don't want your hoop coming loose or popping open. If the hoop pops open, you're gonna to have to start all over. That is unrecoverable. Most things in embroidery you can recover from, but that you cannot. We're about ready to get started. I've got my instructions here, and I like to have my instructions uh, on a tablet. It just makes them easier. I, you know, save a tree, save some paper. I've got my raffia right here. This is my first time to embroider with this, so this will be uh, this will be interesting. And you're also going to need some paper tape. I have this is from 3M. This paper tape, you get 12 rolls for like ten dollars. It's dirt cheap, so this stuff works really well. And then I have got curved snips embroidery these are gingers i've got curved embroidery scissors for trimming in the hoop which you're going to need and tweezers and whatnot i like to keep everything in a tray and make sure that when i put my scissors back i put them back in the tray otherwise i will spend half my time looking for my scissors so it's just a thing that i've kind of trained myself to do is to put things back so I don't waste half my time. And I'm going to go to the pocket for memory. And I sent the designs over wirelessly. Now, Brother came out with this new My Connection feature and that created a new, it looks like a cloud for the memory. I don't know if you can see that real well. Let me get you in a little bit closer. But it, that can be confusing. This is sending the designs wirelessly, the little radar waves there. The cloud is a whole different thing. So that's what I'm looking for. If you hit the cloud and you can't find your design, that may be why. So I'm going to go to the arms. There they are right there and set. And embroidery. That's how simple that is. So I don't pay attention to all of the color changes here because 
that's just to tell the machine to stop. I'm going to use pretty much the same thread for the whole thing. I might do some blue buttons, blue for the buttonholes and whatnot. We'll see. Y'all, it doesn't matter whether you're using the Brother PE800, a little 5x7 hoop, or you've got this great big luminaire. They all work the same. So I'm just going to press the button, and it's going to do the placement line for the batting. You want to take your batting and place it over the entire design. Make sure you cannot see any thread from the placement line anywhere. Just kind of lift it up, take a peek, and make sure it's good. You do not have to tape it down. You can if you want, but I'm just going to let it do its thing. Okay, this is finished stitching and I'm going to remove the hoop and take my curved scissors and trim all around the outside of the batting lines. Don't cut the stabilizer. You just want to cut the batting. If you cut the stabilizer accidentally, you can use a piece of that paper tape and you can tape it from the back. You want to trim fairly closely to the edge of the stitching. There's going to be about a three millimeter stitch that uh, satin stitch that finishes this out. It should cover all of any of the batting that you have outside of the stitch line, but you do want to try to get as close as possible. Put the hoop back into the machine. Now it's going to stitch the placement line for the raffia. Remove the hoop. We've We've got more than enough for two hands and two feet. So I guess I'm just gonna take mine at the first little bend. I guess about that much will work, just like that. Go ahead and pull a piece of tape and put it on the side of your hoop and then put the raffia on there. And you wanna make sure the, la the raffia, whoops, I'm doing the wrong arm. You want to make sure the raffia stays inside of the cuff lines of the of the arm there. So, and then it doesn't matter how long you have it down here because you can trim that. We're going to cut that off later. Let me get my tape now and just tape this down. Okay. Now I'm gonna let the machine do the tack down stitch for the raffia, just like it is. I'm not gonna take it off. I'm just gonna put it all in the machine. This is the easiest way to do this, you guys. <laughs> and I'm gonna let it stitch it down. Make sure the raffia stays inside of that cuff line. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a piece of tape exactly where it's going to stitch because I don't want that foot getting hung up. Let me cut it. This is the first time I've done this, so. I'm gonna go ahead and put the tape exactly where the stitch is gonna be. Now let's do it. I'll 
remove the tape it just tears away from the stitching see how nice that is so it's worth it to put your tape down where the needle is going to be stitching there that turned out really nice and then you want to trim it a quarter of an inch away or so just like that that worked out good I think I'm going to keep the raffia kind of in my little trash can <laughs> yeah and then these I'll just trim here I could do that later but I'll do it now so they're not all over okay this is going to be a messy job you guys good I got a little loop a couple little loops cut those that looks good okay so we're ready to do the other arm now it's going to stitch the placement line for the raffia on the other arm okay I'm going to take this, make sure it's inside the cuff. I'm going to tape it down right where it is going to stitch. And let's see, I'm going to do another piece right here. And let it stitch the zigzag. This is brilliant. <laughs> trim the raffia. You might want a clean little trash can for your raffia. Otherwise, it goes everywhere. So I'm just going to keep mine in here and pull it out as I need it. When you trim your raffia, trim it over a trash can. Lessons learned. See, that just pulls right away like that. Very clean. Very nice. Okay. Now we're going to place the arm front fabric over everything, cover all of the batting. Make sure you've got a little bit, half an inch or so, at least on all sides, top, bottom. going to tape down I stopped this right in the middle because I just didn't like the bumps and bubbles I was getting in the fabric so I'm not happy with that right there I'm going to make sure this fabric is taped down so let me cut these threads right here let it go back a little bit because of the edge of the raffia underneath it wants to bubble and whatnot so I am going to tape this down you guys this is you know corrections on the fly that's how it works so I'm going to tape my fabric down down here this bothers me okay and I am going to this is lesson learned definitely for the legs okay so I'm going to put the hoop back in here and I'm going to hit the needle plus minus, and I'm going to go back about 30 stitches or so. Let's see. 20 is fine. Okay. That's how to recover that. I'm going to hold the fabric down taut. There we go. That looks a lot better. Don't be afraid to stop the machine mid-stitch and fix whatever you think might need fixing. It's perfectly fine. Okay, remove the hoop and trim the fabric away. I do not recommend cutting your pieces ahead of time using a scan and cut or any other cutting machine because you're going to need extra fabric to go over the bulk of the raffia. If you pre-cut your pieces, I don't think they'll fit. 
Okay, these are done. Oh my goodness, they're cute. I'm gonna put this back in the machine and do a thread color change to black to get ready to do the patches. When I change my threads, I, I do it uh, pretty easily. I just cut the thread up at the top and drape it over like this. And then I take the next thread and I go and tie it to the thread I just cut and twist them and just do a single knot like that. I do go through the thread guide that is designed for the bobbin because it just makes me happy. It's, it, it works really well. Then I unthread the needle and pull the thread toward me and pull the new thread through the machine. Very easy, very quick. All right, so we need a placement line for the patch and they do red, blue, yellow, green, so I'm gonna do the same. You want to trim away the fabric, but don't trim right next to the thread. You want to trim, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch away from it so that we can make it kind of raggedy. Take your fingernail and just scrub it a little bit. Next is the placement line for the blue patch. So all you need to do is flip over the hoop. You can trim away these little tails if you want. Don't trim the knots. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to. Let's see. They don't really show. It's completely up to you, whatever fabric you're using. But with the fabric from the kit from Two Chicks Quilting, it looks great. So I'm just going to cover it and make sure I've got fabric down here and everything is covered it's all good and I'm going to use tape and you want to tape the fabric to the back don't be shy with your tape because if the fabric comes loose you need it to hold so it doesn't get caught up underneath the stitching that should work this is just something I always do whenever I am working with fabric on the back. Before I get the hoop completely into the arm, I just make sure, I mean, I can see the fabric through the water soluble stabilizer, but I just make sure there's nothing folded up underneath. That's just a habit to get into whenever you're doing work on the back of the hoop. Okay, so it's going to do the stitch now to 
stitch it all together. trim away any of the tails that might be sticking out from the accent fabric on the front. Any of those stitching tails. You don't want those sticking out from underneath your, your final stitch. They're going to be covered, but you don't want them sticking out. The next one is a 15 minute stitch or 17 minute stitch on my machine. And it's going to do the final satin stitching for the outside of the arms. The last stitch is the buttonholes, and I guess I'll do those in a brown. Oh, these turned out so cute. We need to open up the buttonholes, and I'm going to show you a little trick you can do. It might be a little bit scary. Now, if you have got like it looks like a chisel almost or a woodworker's chisel. Those are uh, tools designed to open buttonholes, but if you don't have one of those, it's very, very easy to tear straight through with a seam ripper. But I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned in garment sewing to be able to open these up and not ruin them. So while they're still in the hoop, you're gonna need a seam ripper, okay? And you want one that's pretty sharp. If you need one, my husband makes these. They're in our store site, powertoolswiththreadstore.com. <laughs> Shameless plug, you guys. All right, what you wanna do is take a straight pin. So this is like a quilter's straight pin. And you wanna pin it, let me get in real close so you can see. On the far end away from you, just to the inside of the stitching. And I'm gonna take the pin and go like, right on the outside right here okay and go in and out it's kind of hard because it's taut but you want to go in and out all right the whole point is that you've now got a barrier there you can see it better on the back you've got a barrier there of metal that's gonna prevent you from ripping through this, the buttonhole stitching. So then, you just wanna take your seam ripper and right in the middle, poke it straight down in, and then put it to the side and gently push through the fabric, being careful not to cut the stitching. And when you get to the pin, just stop and pull the pin. And now you've got a buttonhole right there that uh, was safely done. So I'm gonna do the second one. I'm gonna put it in right before the stitching. And I'm gonna look on the back and make sure that the metal, see how you can see a little bit, you can see the end of the stitching out here outside of the pin. You want the pin to stop right there. All right. And then I'm gonna go straight down in and not catch the edges of the stitches, the satin stitch. Just kind of wiggle it and go as far as the pin will let me. That way you don't have to worry about accidentally running your seam ripper through your stitches. I wanted to give you a little tip. If you are using a larger hoop, like I am here, 
you can save some stabilizer by combining designs. So I am going to touch embroidery and the pocket for memory. And I sent the designs wirelessly. So I'm going to choose, let's see, I'm looking for the face. Here it is. I'm going to hit set. And I'm just going to touch him and move him up just a little bit. Now I want to add and go back to the memory and the wireless. And here's my flower. And hit set. And on the luminaire, you've got select arrows. And that will allow you to choose back and forth. I'm just going to grab it. It's a little bit easier to see here now. I will zoom in for you just a little bit so you can see better that the flower has a little red box around it. And if I hit the select arrow, it will choose the face and I can just move around. But that way you can move things, you can put things where you want, but now I can do both of these designs in a single hooping. So that's a little tip that you can use to save some stabilizer when you're doing designs like this. I'm just going to hit embroidery and I'm going to stitch it out exactly like I did with the arms, being sure to put pieces of raffia right there. I wanted to show you how I remove the stabilizer from around the piece. Now, I have trimmed the stabilizer very, very close to the edge of the fabric. The less you have to take off with water, the better. It's just easier. So I trimmed it very, very close to the outer stitches. The instructions tell you to take a Q-tip. You can take some warm water and you can rub it like this. You can do this while it's in the hoop and then it will eventually fall out of the hoop, okay? Or I prefer to trim it ahead of time and I'm just gonna soak a microfiber cloth in the warm water and the, the fibers on the microfiber cloth just wipe away the, out, the stabilizer around the outside. And it's just much easier, quicker than using a Q-tip, I believe. You can do whatever works for you. It's perfectly fine. And then underneath, I just trimmed it really close as well. And I'm going to leave that right there. Nobody's going to see it. So that's how I remove the excess water soluble stabilizer from the project. Again, I do not recommend soaking this in sink of warm water or anything because the stabilizer that's inside will get gooey and sticky and it might get stiff and it might change the hand of your project and I don't think you want that to happen. So just go around the outside of it and it'll, it'll be just fine. I wanted to show you how I'm going to put the buttons on by machine. This is the Brother NQ3700D and this is a sewing and embroidery machine combo but I mostly use it for sewing. So I have got to put the button on his little hat band right here on the X so that it's going to hold the flower. Now when you choose your buttons it's completely up to you but I chose to make the buttons the same color as whatever fabric it's going to show on top of. So instead of using a red button on the hat band spot because the center of the flower is black, I'm using a black button. And these buttonholes all fit a 5 8 inch button. I will be doing this by machine. You guys know I don't like doing anything by hand. And I'm going to be using this new button foot. This is a new brother. Let me hold this up. It's a brother button foot. It's the letter M. Okay. And it has a couple of prongs right here. Let me get it so it focuses. See the two prongs? There's actually three prongs. So the two prongs... This, this is a little foot that bends down 
and it holds the button in place. And what it will do is you align the holes of the button right next to those two red marks. See that? It's exactly how that works. Most standard buttons like this, whether they're two hole or four hole, are manufactured so that a standard 3.5 zigzag works in order to do this. So I made a video years and years ago about how to put a button on by machine, but I'm going to show you how to do it again just for the scarecrow. Now, Brother and Baby Lock have both come out with a new button on the front of their machine. Let me zoom in so you can see it. And it's this one right here. It looks like just a tiny little circle dot. It doesn't, it doesn't really look like it's, it does anything, but this is your knot. That's your knot button, K-N-O-T. <laughs> so on the screen, I'm going to touch it to activate it and I am going to use my arrow keys to just uh, cycle over and I'm going to choose uh, the number, the zigzag that's going to work for me. That's number 10 and that's fine. And so you can see the width is, I don't know if you can, let me zoom in so you can look at it. See my settings. So the width is 3.5, the length is 1.4. I want to change that to zero. I don't want the feed dogs to advance the stitch at all. So I'm gonna touch on my little settings here and I'm gonna bring this down to zero, right there. So it's just gonna go back and forth in that one spot. I'm gonna touch okay. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So to put a button on by machine, I am going to go ahead and lift up the presser foot and I'm pulling the thread to give myself a fairly good tail. All right. And then I'm going to use the hand wheel and rotate it toward me one revolution and pull up that bobbin thread. I want to get a couple of tails. There we go. So I have my upper thread and my bobbin thread and I have put the button into the foot. It's much easier to preload the button into the foot than it is to try to put it on when the foot is on the machine. So I'm gonna lift this up and just drop the presser foot onto it and get that lifted up. Okay, that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, let me lift up, up you go, okay. I'm gonna lift this, I'm gonna use the back of the presser foot to lift it up just a little. And I am gonna put the button right over the X and then put the presser foot down and also engage the, um, so that the button turns green, okay. Before I go to sewing with the presser foot like I like to, I'll hold on to my tails and I'm going to very carefully hand wheel, use the hand wheel and do a full zigzag back and forth so I know that the needle is not going to hit the button at all. So I'm gonna knot it uh, and let it go down like uh, two or three times and it'll do it in the same spot. So there's my starting knot and now I'm going to use my presser foot and just to a count of like eight. And I'll just let it go up and down eight times on that zigzag. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to knot it off again. Maybe I'll go one more and I'll knot it in the other hole. And again, one, two, three. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to raise the needle and I'm going to raise the presser foot and I'm going to lift it and now I'm moving the button in the foot so I I put the button holes so that the bottom holes were closest to me and I did those first and now I'm going to do the ones on the top so because I had four holes and not two so again 
I am going to uh, by hand I'm going to rotate the hand wheel and make sure it's very clear and now I'm going to do eight stitches. I need to lower the presser foot. Okay, now we have a green button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll go one more over. I'm going to knot it off again. One, two, three. That's it. I'm finished. Now, I'm not going to cut the threads. I'm going to lift the needle. And I'm going to lift the presser foot. And I'm going to grab this and just kind of pull it out okay and I'm gonna pull myself some tails all right I could trim them off right on top and it would probably hold just fine but uh, old-fashioned here I'm going to from the from the back of the button just for these two from the back of the button I am using an old needle threader and I'm going to push it through the front and then I'm going to take those threads and I want to put them through the needle the needle threader this is just easier for me you guys than threading a needle and fighting with all of that it just is no fun to me at all okay I'm going to pull these through to the back of the button so now my tails are on the back of the button this is just me being extra careful that it's going to stay on. I know I knotted it and I'm going to trim them on the back because I did knot them. But on the top I am just tying a double knot and make sure that the top is knotted on firmly just like you would a regular button. Um, regular if you were doing it with a, a hand needle. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim the tails on the where under the button so they can't be seen. So those, that one's done. And then I'm gonna trim these tails because I knotted them off using the sewing machine. Don't cut the knots, just cut the button. I mean, sorry, just cut the tails. Okay, so my button is on and it looks great, all right? And now I can put the little button through. Aw, oh, there we go. That looks great. Pull the little fuzz off, get him all cute. Oh, look at that. That's adorable. And it's gonna hold on through wind and re weather and whatever else might be um, might be doing it. So I'm gonna remove this. I've got some more stabilizer to make sure I get off the edges of this, edges of this, but I wanted to show you guys how I put my buttons on by machine. All right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. My goodness, what an accomplishment. He is so stinking cute and he's going to look amazing hanging on my door for the fall. I can't wait to put him outside. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel a whole lot. It's free to do, so go ahead and do that. And we will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye. Mm -hmm.